are getting ready for your very first barn hunt trial. Congratulations! It's super exciting, but it's also a little bit stressful, and that's okay. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what you need to know before your very first instinct or novice barn hunt trial. Hi, I'm Paula with Canine Country Academy. We create videos to give you the tools and the skills to have a well-mannered dog, all while building the relationship you both deserve. For your very first barn hunt trial, you might be wondering, what should I bring? There's so many things you might think of to bring, but these are the things I would recommend bringing. Number one is a pair of comfortable shoes. You're gonna be on your feet, waiting your turn, competing, and a lot of times it's on a hard surface. So bringing a comfortable pair of shoes will definitely help you throughout your trial experience. I would also recommend bringing snacks for yourself, treats for your dog, you get to reward them afterwards outside of the barn, as well as treats for when you're waiting your turn. I also recommend bringing a shade cloth if you plan on crating your dog in your vehicle, if that's suitable for the setup that you have and or bring a crate if you can crate indoors. You might want a blanket or something to cover them up as well or maybe something to kind of create a moat so that other dogs can't come right up to their kennel. I would also recommend bringing some fresh water for yourself and for your dog so you both can stay hydrated during the trial. One of the things that's the most important to bring is whatever equipment you've been using to practice with your dog. So that might be a specific slip leash, maybe a special leash you had made, or maybe it's just their everyday collar, but you wanna make sure to have that handy and know where it is. Knowing where each of these things are and maybe even creating a checklist after this video would be really helpful and it will reduce the stress that you have on making sure you have everything, especially if the competition isn't close to home. You've arrived at the trial venue and now it's time to figure out where you're supposed to check in and get the lay of the land. So if you're at an event that has a lot of other things going on like barn hunt and duck diving and rally, then you might have trouble finding the location. So definitely get there with plenty of time to settle yourself and your dog. Once you find where you're supposed to be, you're gonna check in, so you're gonna sign in, say you're here, then you're gonna go over, there's gonna be a board or something letting you know the run order. I like to take a picture of it with my cell phone. You can see an example here. It is subject to change, but not terribly so. So check, you know, periodically and see what's going on with the run order. But typically, they're going to run it in a very specific order each day and they've let you know that by way of an email a few days or a week before your event is supposed to start. Now that you've checked in, you've gotten your run order, take a look around, see where everything is, be acquainted where the bathroom is for you, where are the different rings gonna be, where is it that you're going to wait in the blind, where can you set up if you can set up indoors and settle your dog in that area. You know, take that time to kind of take it all in. When you arrive, they're also gonna let you know when the briefing is, and they're only gonna be one briefing each day, and so you wanna make sure, especially being a newbie, that you make sure to meet with the judges and get that information as to any questions you have or you know what, how it's gonna flow for the day. Now it's time to walk your dog. You can walk them around uh, anywhere they've said you can and then settle them wherever they're gonna hang out, whether it's in your vehicle because the weather's cool enough or you've got some shade cloth and you can keep them cool or if there's a place that you can create them inside. And you might need to hang by them a little while. It might be really new to them as well to hang out and wait while fun things are happening around them. And then also give yourself a moment, take a breath, take it all in. It's so fun to get to do this with your dog. It's a great opportunity to bond with them, to do something that you both enjoy and really absorb it because these times are really special. You were likely emailed by the trial secretary what the flow was gonna be like for this particular trial. What you normally see is that they start with instinct in the morning, then they do novice right after that, then senior, then masters, and then if they're offering it, crazy eight. If they have a big enough venue, they may run things side by side. So they might have all of the lower level competitors on one side, and then all the higher level on the other. 
It just depends on where you go. I've seen it a variety of ways. So just make sure you understand where you need to be when. They typically will let you know when you're coming up and so you need to potty your dog and get ready and that way you're not freaking out when they call your name or your dog's name. One thing you might be wondering is, when is lunch? <laughs> you know, lunch is important for sure. So the judges typically decide when they're gonna take a lunch break. That means we all take a lunch break and they will post on the run order board the time that they're gonna be back. So that way you know if it's 30 minutes or 45 minutes, or whatever it needs to be, and you can go ahead and take a break yourself. I do recommend because many venues aren't near fast food or quick serve places to pack a lunch or pack something so you can, you know, take care of yourself and have a snack because it can be a long day, especially if you're doing multiple things. One thing I really appreciate about the barn hunt venues is that everyone's really helpful. Everyone's looking out for each other, whether that's volunteers or the people actually hosting it, they wanna make sure everyone's having a good time. So don't be worried that you're new, especially if you're going somewhere that your instructor isn't there or someone you know isn't there. Just ask, find a friendly face, and they will be more than happy to help you figure out whatever you need. Once the event starts, you're gonna start noticing a pattern. So what will happen is someone at the staging area will yell out, hey, you know, this level, so they might say, open dogs, trial one, blind one, get ready. This means if you're in blind one, you're going to get your dog, you're gonna go potty them quickly, make sure they do everything they need to do, have the leash that you need, if you need any treats, have that all ready, have your setup, and then you're gonna head over to the blind. The blind is where you wait your turn until you get to go out and have your dog search. So if you're in the novice trial one, which you might be, then you need to be aware of when they're calling you and what blind you're in. When you're in the blind, you have to be mindful of the other dog, so make sure that you gather up your dog, have a shorter leash. If they like treats and you can give them some treats while they're in there, that's totally fine. I have to do that with my dog. You are gonna be sitting fairly close to other dogs, so everyone needs to be taking care of their dog, keeping them out of other dogs' ways. And then when they say it's your turn, they might call your name or your chair number. Everyone's gonna have an assigned area to sit. Then you're gonna gather up your dog, you're gonna head out, and there's gonna be a place to put your stuff. It could be a stump, it could be a chair, it could be the ground, somewhere in between the blind and where you're going to search. So take off your bait bag, you know, set anything down you are not allowed to take in the ring because we don't want you disqualified. <laughs> so once that happens, you're gonna go in, you're gonna compete and have a great time. I highly recommend saying thank you to everyone. I typically do it right when I get in, thank you. And then once I'm collecting my dog and leaving, I thank everyone, thank you, thank you so much. Because a lot of people are volunteering, it's not just the paid judge. You're gonna gather up your dog, you're gonna woo, celebrate, you're gonna go grab your stuff, and you're gonna continue that celebration away from where you just searched so that they can keep going because then the next dog's gonna come out or they're gonna set up again. They typically run the trials back to back. So if you signed up for novice trial one and novice trial two, then they're gonna do all of the level novice trial one for the day, and then they typically will run trial two right after it. So you have a little bit of a break. This is a great opportunity to potty your dog, for you to take them on a little walk if they're a little spicy, or if you feel up to it, you can volunteer. Now for your very first one, it might be overwhelming. Do what's right for you, even if they ask. It's your first time, you're, you're a baby. So don't feel pushed to volunteer. It's a great way to learn and I highly recommend it when you're ready and they will teach you on the job skills, but no pressure. And now it's time to wait for your next turn. Congratulations, you finished your first trial. Now, if you did all the things, whatever that is, so if you're doing instinct and you found the rat, or your dog found the rat, I should say, then your qualifying ribbon is gonna be somewhere over by the trial secretary. They will likely print out a sticker, put it on a qualifying ribbon, and set it over there once they get all the paperwork in. Should you place? So placements mean that you were the top dog of that level and that size dog, then it's gonna be, you know, one, two, three, et cetera. And then you're gonna go get that ribbon if you 
qualified for a ribbon. It's all gonna be there. If you have to leave and come back the next day, it will still be there, but make sure and go check that out. Do not assume because you're new or your dog's slow and methodical or whatever, if you qualified, always check because you don't know what happened to the other competitors and you might have a surprise for you when you get that ribbon. Now, of course, once you get that ribbon, make sure you take a good picture because it's such a great moment. You know, this shows all the work that you two put in to get to this point, that part of your relationship. A trial and a competition is a test. This is not a training zone. It's a test of what we've been able to do. And that lets us know what do we need to do more of next time or less of next time and tweak it a little bit. This is not a time to over assess and get upset about anything. You just need to celebrate. You came in there, you had a goal, you accomplished it or you didn't, and then what can I do better next time? Something that's very important to me, especially as an instructor and a fellow competitor in barn hunt or any competition sport is to be a good competitor. You need to be someone that people enjoy having at their venue. This means thanking everyone. Thank you for doing this. You know, any help you get, helping others if that's appropriate. Also, making sure you give other dogs and people space, you know, really respecting that area because it's your dog's not there to socialize. Your dog is there to do the job you've come to do. It's also really important that you stay on top of when you're supposed to start and where you are in the run order. Also helping if you can, even in a small way, holding a door open, maybe helping someone carry a, a kennel around. These are things that we need to keep in mind as competitors is that our attitude, not only towards our wonderful dog, but also to the trial hosts and the volunteers is really important and the fellow competitors. We're all there competing against ourselves in reality. We're not really competing against everyone else. It's us against us. And that's what we need to remember. One thing I can't emphasize enough is read the rule book a few weeks before you go to compete with your dog. The rule book does change from time to time. We just got an update in June of 2022 of some things that are really important. So never expect someone else to give you updates on the rules, even your instructor, even your you know fellow competitors or the judge. You need to know going in what the rules are. They're not allowed to give you that information. And even if they did, what if it's wrong? You can't blame them because it was your responsibility as a competitor to have the latest and greatest information. If you've not yet signed up for a trial or you don't even know how to get started, I've left a link down below in the description for the Barn Hunt Association. You can get out there, you can register your dog, you can see who's teaching, you can also see what trials are around. I think it's a great opportunity to go and volunteer and learn before you ever even get started in the sport. I have learned so, so much from watching the different levels as you know, a newbie myself, I've only been doing it less than two years, and it's just so much that you can see by other teams in the ring and understanding how everything flows and understanding what you may need to work on as a handler. I know if you're watching this video and you're interested in barn hunt, you really like to spoil your dog a little bit. And I have shared this recipe here with you about how to make some delicious treats for your dog one of our most popular videos. 